so you want to know how to make a placement worthy beat. In this video I'll be going over how I made the beat for J. Kim's Parachute. So I received weekly loops from a guy named Ioli Beats and he sent me this loop a few weeks ago. Immediately I knew that I could make something amazing with it. So the process for me when I'm making loops is I like to take all the stems of the loop and just arrange it. So this is how the beat started. I just took all the stems and placed them out to exactly where I would want them to be. And obviously it isn't final as I put drums on it and kind of have a feel of what an artist is going to do on it, then I start changing up things. So for this beat I had an intro. A kind of short verse, kind of like an intro verse. Then it goes into a pre-hook. Then I go into the first hook. Then I went into a verse. Then I had another pre-hook. And then it goes into a hook that's twice as long as the first one. And then I just have an outro section. So really in this beat, this first hook section has the main hook. And then I have a post hook where artists can choose if they want to put vocals on it. Most do. But my intention was to kind of just let it be on its own. Maybe some background vocals. So really with main hooks, as you can see, I have the main guitar not in it. And my reasoning for that is I think artists will have an easier time trying to place vocals on it if there's not so much that they have to compete with. As you can see, when I place everything in the post hook, it becomes a lot more chaotic. They could still write to it, but I want it to be as easy as possible for them. I forgot to mention this vocal chop I put in there. That's honestly one of my favorite parts of the beat and it's literally just my voice. So it's just a really bad phone recording of an idea I had and this is what that sounds like. So I took that, consolidated it. This was actually one of the first elements I put in here. And these are all the plugins I put on it. So I put Pitcher on it because I don't have Autotune, so just FL Studio Pitcher, just to put it in key. OTT to kind of make it feel a little bit more airy, breathy. Some vintage chorus, just because I wanted to. I mean, it's just a creative decision, not really meant for a mix. And then I put a vocal guitar rig preset on it, just to kind of make it feel more wide, more stereo-y. More stereo enhancer. People say don't use this, I don't really understand why not. Maybe it does mess up the uh, phasing, but I haven't had an issue yet. Then I put gross beat on there, which actually creates a chop effect. This is without gross beat. So it still sounds like really weird, really awkward without it. As soon as you put it on though. Just all comes together. And then I just put a light EQ on it. Light EQ. Uh, there's quite a bit to it. Just took out all the low end, boost some high mids. Just try to make it stand out while not being too overpowering. And really when it comes to my type beats, when I'm mixing a lot of the instruments, I really only do like stereo enhancing and just very light EQs. Just placing it where I want it to be and taking out frequencies that really don't need to be there. So you can hear in like the hook and stuff, there's not a lot of low end. There's a little bit of low end just so it keeps the main warm feeling of the guitar but it needs to have low end free so I can put stuff like the 808s and kicks in there. Cause this is what it would sound like without all that mixing. So obviously having it in there just makes it feel more alive and helps set up the mix for later in the line. So before the hook comes in, I have this bass guitar that I just used flex to make. This is what it sounds like. I think Flex is an amazing VST for being free on FL Studio and especially the bass guitars in there. I have not really been disappointed. People don't really come to me saying my bass guitars sound fake. I think they sound real enough, especially when everything else is in the mix. And when it comes to drums, I like to put a lot of drums in there. So my motivation for this beat was just kind of have a poppy feel, just a really happy, bouncy feel to it. So I always start with a snare. I have this airy acoustic snare in here. Then I have this anti-pop snare. 
Then I put this kind of percussive type snare, almost like in a sound effect. And then I, it's called a snare, but it's really just kind of a sound effect. And then layer those all together. A lot of people only use one or two snares and almost all of my beats I layer like three to four snares and even sometimes put a clap in there. Then after the snares I pretty much always put a kick pattern down. It's a very poppy kick pattern and honestly you can't go wrong with that. It just really suits the energy of the beat. And when you're creating kick patterns, you always want to make sure that they sound good with the melodies because often I hear people put kick patterns that sound really cool on their own, but they just clash so much. And then all of my hooks, I always put a crash just right on the impact without a crash. And with a crash. just fills up a lot of empty space that otherwise just wouldn't be filled out. And then often I put like a ride or another symbol underneath it just to kind of keep it going throughout the entire hook. I pretty much put that in almost every beat I make, whether or not it's indie pop, anti-pop, hyper pop, even trap beats, I use that. It just fills up so much space without actually filling up frequencies that will clash with an artist. And then the things that really make this sound so energetic and so happy are the sound effects I have in here. Just really simple, but listen to what it sounds like if I didn't have them. I guess it still sounds good, but with having them in there, it just makes it feel a lot more fun, a lot more lively. And then I put a drum loop in here, just kind of fill up some percussion. This drum loop is by me. This is what this sounds like. I wanted to use that because it also did have some sound effects in it, like little like water sound effects that I thought would really sound cool in this. By the way, that drum loop is going to be in a kit that me and my friend Cuban are working on. Here's a little sneak peek on some of the drum loops I have in there right now. So yeah, definitely don't miss out on that. I will not allow you to forget. I will keep reminding you. <laughs> And then in all of my pop beats, I always just put a very simple hi-hat pattern using acoustic hats. I don't do anything crazy because honestly, they're going to be quiet in the mix and I just want to have the energy keep moving. So that's what those are pretty much there for. Then I just put this drum fill I have from a pack I use that I think just is a good transition between different sections. And then in the post hook, I have this little chant, just a guy going, hey, 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 bring so much energy to it. And in this beat, I use the OTW 808 from Immortal. If I'm not using one of my 808s, this is my go-to one. It just has a very nice deep sound with not a lot of high end, and it always hits hard. And then in the final post hook, I put one of my 808s with all of the low end taken out and a bunch of distortion, just to kind of have a gritty synth lead almost. And then for the verses, I just take a lot of the elements out that really fill up the hook, and then I just keep the snares, the kicks, and like the hi-hats in. And then when the verse builds up a little more, I'll add some elements in, just bring back the sub bass, I'll bring back the crash here, and also the drum loop. And 
And then one of my favorite things to do with the final hook of the beat is to kind of have a delayed drop. So it's exactly as it sounds. I have all of the guitar melodies in here, but I have most of the main instruments out. So stuff like the snare, the kick, the 808 are just gone. And then I implement it later into the hook. So really the most important things to keep in mind when you're making a beat for an artist is to have the emotion in the room. When an artist listens, they have to feel some type of emotion. For this, I wanted them to feel happy and inspired. And then a problem a lot of producers have, and even one I still face, is leaving room for them. When you're making a beat and you're leaving room, it often feels empty, so you often overdo a lot of things. It might sound good on its own, but as soon as you hear an artist on it, you're just like, Maybe I shouldn't have put that. Some artists sent me some of their songs they were using this beat with, and I thought they fit perfectly everywhere. There's nothing really that collides with them. So often that's what goes into a beat that does so well with so many artists, and bigger artists will pick it up, is if there's room and there's emotion, then they're going to like it. If it's a really cool beat, they might like it, but they won't use it. And if you're making tight beats for artists, I don't think you're trying to make instrumentals. Play the drums on their own just so you can kind of get an idea of how I arrange the drums in a hook. If you're using really high quality samples, just samples that are good all the time, the most you'll ever need to do is just volume automation. So when you're making drums, first thing I always think is so important is sound selection. Here are some of my go-to kits that I think have sounds that you will always use. The Citrus Drum Kit from CM Spark, which is actually free. The Hive Mind Drum Kit, which is also from CM Spark. The Immortal Kick 5 is the go-to drum kit if you ever are making anti-pop. The Mushroom Drum Kit from MCX has a bunch of really nice acoustic sounds. The Photosynthesis the photosynthesis oh god damn i can't say it this word that took me too many tries to try to pronounce from hayrick is a really good drum kit for indie pop and it has a lot of nice acoustic sounds in there and then i always have to plug myself the stardust collection drum kit for me has a lot of really nice sounds that i use all the time still this kit has more digital sounds instead of acoustic so that's really good for some anti-pop a lot of hyper pop that i use it for there's 120 sounds that I think you will love and always use. So anyways, I hope this gives you insight on how a placement worthy type beat sounds and how it's kind of arranged. And I hope you can implement some of these strategies into your own beats. And after you watch this and you make a beat inspired by this, be sure to hit me up on Instagram. I will respond. Also leave a comment letting me know if there's anything I missed or if there's something you want me to go into more detail with. This is just a quick tutorial, quick showing, so I understand a lot of things I didn't go really in depth on. So if that's what you want, just let me know.